Thanks for joining our overview of EMC's Extreme I.O. today. My name is Kyle Lajeski. You know, it's interesting I start this overview with maybe an analogy or a similarity of what's happening in this solid state flash media space to some evolutions that happened three, four, five years ago in the backup recovery space. There is a fundamental objective to want to do backups to more reliable, faster disk-based media, but it was cost prohibitive and organizations leveraged a significant amount of tape. There was a fundamental technology transition, and that was the ability to do uncompromised inline data reduction that flipped the economics of disk and made them possible in the backup space. There was also 50 to 60 vendors in that arena at the time, which have quickly consolidated now to a very small number, of which EMC owns north of 65% of the market share in the purpose-built backup appliance space. Similarly, organizations fundamentally want to take advantage of the media shift and primary storage, leveraging all flash-based media. But again, like in the backup world, there is cost considerations for running an all-flash data center that have led folks to intermix flash with disk. Like backup recovery, a fundamental shift in the ability to do inline, no compromise data reduction will change that paradigm. We believe Extreme I.O., similar to how data domain shifted the backup landscape, will shift the all-flash or purpose-built flash appliance market space. And although Extreme I.O. has only been generally available for eight months, in that very, very short time, it has become the number one all-flash array in the market today, with over 40 petabytes sold. We believe we will also capture a significant market position to what we did in the backup recovery space with data domain. So why don't we spend some time talking about why Extreme I.O. has had the success it's had in the marketplace in such a relatively short period of time. And again, like data domain, it really starts with architecture, a purpose-built architecture for Flash, similar to data domain being a purpose-built architecture for backup recovery. I'll transition here with another analogy, um, and I have a picture here of a Tesla vehicle. A lot of times people ask, what's the number one benefit of this car? And the obvious answer is, it needs no gas. Oftentimes people don't consider the other advantages, such as no moving parts, the ability to literally drive a million miles on the engine, no oil changes, a 0 to 60 speed of 4.4 seconds, and a number of others you can read on the slide. We look at Extreme I.O. and kind of ask the similar, what is the number one benefit question, and people pretty quickly answer performance. However, there's more to just the performance paradigm with Extreme I.O. Data reduction, simplicity, lack of tuning, reliability, space efficiency, and total cost of ownership are really some of the differentiators that Extreme I.O. brings to the table that are outside of the obvious performance benefits, similar to the analogy here with the Tesla. So the first place I'll start is around architecture, and architecture ultimately matters. This starts at the hardware, the hardware level. First, we talk about scale-out design with Extreme I.O., the, the ability to take multiple engines and scale them together such that every time I add an engine or a brick, I am gaining compute, network, storage, and performance. It's all interconnected on an RDMA backplane and the ability to do active-active between its bricks or controllers. Out of the gate, we have 70% raw to usable capacity utilization so that of the flash you're buying, we're actually leveraging a significant amount of that raw flash capacity. We call this uh, extreme data protection or XDP, which essentially blends the performance of RAID 10, the efficiency of RAID 5, and the data reliability of RAID 6 into a new age data protection schema that we call XDP. Again, it's all built using eMLC flash drives, so enterprise class or enterprise grade flash and the architecture was built from the ground up to support a flash-based architecture. Once you transition off of the hardware layer and talk about the data services, this is where ultimately we start to build on the hardware superiority of Extreme I.O. Everything is natively thin provisioned. Everything is natively inline, deduplicated all of the time. We have space-efficient snapshots, which essentially allow you to take a clone of a primary database again and again and again with zero space overhead. For example, I might have a 5 terabyte Oracle database and want three copies for uh, test, dev, and training, essentially consuming 20 terabytes of space, five for prod and three in the copies. 
in that use case, data domain, excuse me, extreme I.O., would really only be consuming 5 terabytes of space, although logically provisioned 20 terabytes of space. Coming in the summer will also feature compression, or the ability to take that native 5 terabyte database in Oracle and compress it down to anywhere between 2 to 1, 4 to 1, 5 to 1, again, depending on your data type. And lastly is integration. One of the nice things about working with EMC versus some of the other startup players in this space is it integrates into a very wide portfolio of additional technologies. VPlex, for example, gives you the ability to create an active, active data center with your flash uh, devices. Multipath failover with PowerPath and the ability to integrate this into a data center in a box approach with highly converged infrastructure from VCE, VBlock, or VSpec. And again, all of the VMware plugins you would expect with VMware Array uh, and API integration and vCenter plugins for VSI and other virtualization, monitoring, and automation tools. Moving forward here, you can see a picture of what an X-Brick looks like. Two active controllers with 32 CPU cores, 512 gigabytes of RAM, 25 enterprise class EMLC solid state drives, and of course connectivity for Fiber Channel and iSCSI hosts. We talked briefly around the inline data reduction, both in the form of deduplication and compression, and the ability of XDP or extreme data protection to create a very, very effective raw to usable ratio out of the gate. I highlighted space efficient snapshots in which I can take multiple copies of a database or a working environment, and it's not how many copies do you afford or can't afford, it's how many copies do you need to get the job done, because again, there's no incremental space consumed for those space efficient snapshots. The system is already uh, fully encrypted with data at rest encryption at the drive level, level and provides linear scalability as you add your first brick, second brick, fourth brick, and so on, I can sustain a significantly high amount of IOPS. When you look at kind of how the system scales here, I can start with anywhere between 150,000 mixed IOPS. Uh, or in a highly read intensive workload, 250,000 read IOPS in the entry level single brick system. That scales to over a million read IOPS or 600,000 mixed workload IOPS in a fully populated 4x brick cluster. The beauty of this is it's enterprise ready and can handle not only uh, virtual workload, database workload, but essentially anything that your data center can throw at the box. It has the ability to scale with sub millisecond latency with rich data services that are always on and provides no tuning or hotspots. There's a great white paper here that IDC wrote on how to test these all flash arrays to ensure you're getting highly predictable performance. One of the key characteristics of how we are able to do this is we do not do any system level garbage collection and we never turn off our data services. So whether the array is at 50%, 70%, or 99% full, it is in line all the time when it comes to data services. That ensures predictable, consistent performance under any workload condition. Here you can see a couple of the database and analytic workload advantages. We also talk about some of the virtual server infrastructure workload advantages, most of which have been highlighted already, and VDI. Here you can read a great Citrix Ready Lab white paper of a Zen desktop environment running on Extreme IO. For more information, please visit ExtremeIO.com for reference architecture, solution guidelines, testing and best practices, architecture, white papers and videos, and customer case studies. And as always, you can reach out to your EMC account executive for additional information. Thank you for joining and have a great day.